Yo, what is going on Red Dead Redemption 2 fans? Gio Quinto here, back with another video for you all today. In this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to pick up the legendary or unique horse known as Buell. We can obtain Buell through the side quest four-part series known as the Veteran. Now, this is going to activate once we get to Chapter 6. This is the location for that. However, you do not want to do this quest until the epilogue. I am not going to spoil the reason why. Just trust me when I say it. You do not want to do this as early as I did. Now, in order for us to start this quest, we need to go off-road. And hidden in the trees, we will find the beginning and first part to the Veteran quest line. Hey! You there? Can you help? Can you help me, mister? What's the problem? My goddamn horse got spooked and run off. Are you hurt? Not too bad, at least. But he took my damn leg. Sorry. He went that way, I think. After hearing the stranger's plea, we are going to head downhill and locate Buell, who is just off doing his own thing. What you need to do then is calm the horse and lead him back to his owner. Alternatively, you can study the horse and you'll learn something really cool. This horse has a Cremello gold coat that is unique to Buell. We definitely want this thing, trust me when I say you do, after personal use, this is one of my favorite horses, easily top 3 in the game. So we need to walk up to Buell and calm him, like once again we are going to do with any other horse. You're going to walk up slow while crouched and you are going to hit your calm button until that disappears in this situation though, which is a little different than capturing wild horses. Once the calm button disappears, you can walk up to Buell and then lead him back to the veteran. Once you drop Buell off, you'll learn additional information about the stranger and will be able to continue his side quest line. Long story short, he's going to invite you fishing and he's going to tell you to meet him in his cabin northwest of Ocray's Run. I will show you guys that location on the map so we can continue this quest line. Just keep a mental note that every part of this quest line happens within a few days of each other. So once you complete one part, you have to wait a few days before you can take on another. So go sleep, do some side missions, and be progressive until you see his initial pop back up on the map. So after you complete part one, part two is going to be located not too far from you if you're still in the northeast. You're going to head to Ocray's Run, which is the lake and location for the second side quest because you'll be doing some fishing here. And let me just say, I absolutely love me some fishing. 100% sarcasm. You are going to be taking on a legendary fish and this beast, not even a beast if we're going to talk about the size of this thing, took me about 30 minutes to reel in and for the sake of the viewer we aren't even going to go there. I'm going to skip through this footage and we're going to see the end result once we reel this thing in. After you guys bring this fish back to his cabin, he's going to emphasize on how he wants to go hunting the next time you come by. So once again, you're going to wait a few days, occupy yourself with some more quests, and then you're going to head back here when the initials show back up on the map. After a few days when the initial show back up on the map, you're going to head to the cabin, knock on the door, and that will initiate part 3 to this quest line. This features a unique wolf, not to be confused with a legendary wolf or the legendary wolf from the legendary map that has been lingering the area. You and Hamish are going to go hunt this thing and take it out. Once you reach your endpoint uphill, you're going to run into an ambush with some wolves, so make sure you bring a shotgun with some slug rounds to make quick work of these wolves. Once you take out the grunts, you're going to take out the main beast. And once you hunt him, that will end part 3 to this quest line, leaving one more part for you to complete. After a few days when the initial show back up on the map, you're going to head to the cabin and initiate the last part to this quest line. Part number 4 is going to feature another hunt and animal that can't help but stop lingering around Hamish's cabin. Looking out the window, you will see a giant boar. After running outside, failing to kill it, this will create a tracking quest in which you need to search for clues to find the boar. After you find your clues, you will then locate it and try and take it out. As you're on the way to take the boar out, however, you'll hear some gunshots and then you will need to go and check on Hamish. Uh, Hamish. <laughs> I got thrown and a bastard hog got me. Take a bill for me, would you? He's a good horse. He may be stubborn, but he's strong. <laughs> I 
Even though I found this sad, I can't help but notice the irony in all that just happened. Ned! It's Robert. We were hunting him. A bull. Intervening with our goodbye to Hamish, we have the giant boy that killed him, rushing Arthur who pulls out his pistol in Jedi mode and takes it out. Once you take out the boar, you can break off its tusk and sell it for a nice chunk of change. Come on, Buell. Let's go. Taking up Hamish on his final words and mounting Buell, he becomes ours. I find it really wrong that Rockstar just decided you're gonna leave Hamish there and not include like a burial scene or anything very awkward but you're gonna zone out of your map and you're gonna look for the nearest stable so he's officially registered as our horse and he's mounted and tied to arthur now outside of the van horn trading post you will notice that there is a stable there heading to the stable and making room for buell if you don't have that already he is officially ours to either store or use as our primary horse. If you guys look inside my stable here and hopefully you don't get dizzy, I'm comparing the stats for four of the best horses in the game. This includes Buell. I think there is no number one. I don't know why people debate or try and argue or title one is the best. I think it's all dependent on your current mood and your needs or what you like in your own personal horse. It's all opinion, but we have the white, Black Arabians, and then we have the racehorse, which you can buy via Strawberry Stables once you start Chapter 3. So all of these guys are absolutely great, and as you can see, some stats are higher than others, and I must say, through riding all these, their behavior patterns change once you get to max bond. Some might annoy the crap out of you just based off how they act as you're riding it. Others are super calm. So once again, in my opinion, that is something that is entirely opinion-based. Now let's look at the focus of this video and what makes this a great ride in Buell. Buell is an absolute beast, and just like Hamish said, this horse runs up hills like it's nothing. I mean, the horse is huge, and it's perfect for the Beaver Creek Annisburg area because there's so many hills, and Buell just makes that seem like nothing. My favorite part about this horse is the massive health pool and the high levels of obedience and bond to Arthur. This thing doesn't spook much and it's a reliable ride and that's my favorite feature. But the one that surprises me the most, and you're gonna see it here, check out me going downhill. Absolutely outstanding handling considering the size of the horse. You have to add Buell to your collection because it is absolutely outstanding. Just once again, make sure you do that in the epilogue. And that is it for this video. As always, if you guys enjoyed this one, definitely feel free to leave a like, sub if you're new, and check out the rest of the Red Dead Redemption 2 content on my YouTube channel. This channel has grown so much over the past year, and I absolutely love you guys and the amount of support that I've been getting. So as always, I can't help but say it, and I'm sure you hear it a lot from other YouTubers. Thank you so much because you don't understand how motivating it is for us as content creators and how much it keeps us pushing. I'm grateful that you're here and that I have an audience to upload to and I'm having an absolute blast and that's what matters most. If you're watching this video come Christmas Eve, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. I'm going to take a few days off. Thank you guys so much once again. This has been Gia. Enjoy your weekend guys. I hope you get everything you want. Later. Happy Holidays.